Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor, and alongside me is my co-host, Todd Heal. What's up, guys? The video version of today's episode is available on YouTube. If you're enjoying the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. This week, we have chosen the 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. A sweet boy from a poor family dreams of finding one of five golden tickets hidden inside chocolate bar wrappers, which will admit him to the eccentric and reclusive Willy Wonka's magical factory. One after another, tickets are discovered by ghastly children, but will the lad find the last remaining one and have all his dreams come true? Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was released on June 30th, 1971. On a budget of $3 million, it made $4 million. Has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 91% and an audience score of 87%. So, Todd, let's discuss Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Spoilers are ahead. So, Todd, first off, what's your history with this film? Uh, being 1971, I think this is the first movie we've reviewed so far that's actually a little bit older than I am. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. Uh, this is just one of those films uh, that when I was growing up, kind of like a Wizard of Oz uh, <laughs> It was like one of those timeless children's classics. You know, it would air on TV maybe once or twice a year. You had a couple shots to see it. Right. Uh, I've, you know, don't even actually remember the first time I ever saw it, but I've saw it a few times down through the years. I always enjoyed it. Yeah, so for me, uh, a lot different here. So this was actually the first time I've actually sat down to watch this film. It's one of those that's like, uh, it's like almost like pop culture osmosis. Like right. I've never seen it, but like I, I knew a lot about it going in. Obviously, I knew the premise, most of the characters. I've heard a lot and read a lot about it. And, you know, I've watched other YouTubers talk about it over the years, but it was not something I sit down myself and watched. Uh, another film that I would compare like that is The Wizard of Oz. Right. I never sat down and actually watched The Wizard of Oz, but I could tell you quite a bit about The Wizard of Oz, but I've never sat down and actually watched it. So this was my first time with uh, actually sitting down myself and watching uh, Willy Wonka. And a little mixed results for me, but we'll, we'll talk about it. Right. Um, where do you want to start off with talking about uh, Willy Wonka? Uh, I thought we might start with our five winners here. Are we jumping too far ahead? No, I think that's okay. fine. All right. Uh, of course, we got our, our number one guy, old Charlie Bucket here. Yes. Uh, poor boy. Good heart. Yeah, from uh, from a family of uh, some good, some uh, ne'er-do-well freeloaders, which we'll talk about. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have Augustus Gloop. Uh, I guess you could say Augustus here is maybe, pardon my French, your prototypical fat kid. <laughs> yeah, he's my insert character. He just he's just hungry. He of all the awful children, he's probably the least awful. He doesn't really say much. He just he's just hungry and wants to eat. Uh, we have Mike TV. I guess his vice is uh, way too much TV. <laughs> uh, annoying. Annoying. Uh, annoying. Uh, he likes TV, though, so I'll mostly give him a pass. Uh, we have Veruca Salt, uh, your prototypical spoiled brat. I uh, <laughs> wanted her and her father to die in that factory. I hope they did. <laughs> and then we have Violet Beauregard. And as unless I'm missing something, is Violet's only vice? She just chews way too much chewing gum? Uh, <laughs> she, well, besides being annoying, she loves okay, chewing gum. Okay, she's, all right. She's very annoying and, like, very... Uh, she wants the spotlight too. She's always like, yeah. "No, Daddy, it's m it's me. Right. Look at this gum, bitch." <laughs> oh, I'm, other girl, I'm She's talking got that to. She's been yeah. in a chewing gum war with. Yeah, exactly. I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. So I think Augustus, not too bad. Mike TV, not too bad. But Violet, pretty annoying. Yes. And I wanted Veruca dead <laughs> by the end of this film. I, uh, if that was my child, oh, I'd probably oh, be in jail. Uh, but, yeah, th those are contest winners. So, you know, if you don't know the premise of this film, uh, Willy Wonka, he's a recluse. He has a chocolate factory. No one really knows much about him, what goes on in there. They All all he knows is that they, he supplies the world with delicious chocolate treats. Yeah, the place is under lock and key. Nobody exactly. goes in. Nobody comes out. He has some kind of uh, nemesis, I would say. Uh, slugworth. Slugworth that people have heard tales about that try to maybe put him out of business and those kind of things to see to seal uh steal his secrets um but he runs a contest basically he he hides five golden tickets inside uh five wonka bars spread out throughout the world uh, i think some of the winners uh, are from like two from the u.s i want to say and two from Eng well one from england one from germany i think that's I right say, and then you have you know charlie himself right um but yeah i mean basically pretty simple premise on its face uh so I think uh, the first thing that I want to start out here with, uh, the Candyman. 
It's our first song, right? Not the not the eighties horror film, Dot. <laughs> not that. I okay. know that's what you were thinking. I, I saw the wheels turning. Yeah, no, the the <laughs> actual literal candy man, the candy store owner. So, uh, did you notice in that scene where all the children are going in there uh, that he almost killed that one girl when he lifts the bar gate up? Oh yeah, and like smacks her in the face almost. How's that guy staying in business? He's just giving that shit so away that's what left I'm and right. So, <laughs> put this together for me. Gives kids free candy. But then the poorest child in the town comes in. Oh, you're paying kids. Immediately charges it. Hey, uh-huh. up front, sir. <laughs> He's barely put the chalk on his mouth. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So uh, bad, very bad business owner. Yeah. Uh, a lot of unaccounted for inventory in that store, I would say. Um, we talked a little bit about Charlie. Charlie is poor. His mom, uh, I think you've remarked before the podcast that she... Wash his clothes for the whole damn town. Exactly. Looks like. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I guess she's a she's a washer or runs a laundry or assists in a laundry of some Something sort. Something along those lines. Um, the rest of Charlie's family are a bunch of freeloading fucks. Ah, uh, here we go, boy. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to set up some of the other characters. So Charlie's grandparents. They're all bedridden. He has four grandparents, uh, and um, and they're all bedridden. All bedridden. Uh, one grandpa. Another grandpa and both of their wives. I forget their names right off. But the one key grandpa that we should talk about, Todd, I know you feel very strongly about this. And this has been something that a lot of people have covered all a lot of years. <laughs> but tell us about Grandpa Joe. Here's old Grandpa Joe. So Grandpa Joe has supposedly been bedridden for near 20 years, if not over 20 years. At one point in the movie, he actually makes a comment that, you know, maybe I would have tried to get up if the floor wasn't so cold. Yeah. My, um, meanwhile, my family's over here eating cabbage fucking soup. They're living off cabbage water, which is pretty much the water the cabbage is boiled in. And I don't want to touch the floor because it's want to cold. Touch, I don't want to touch the cold floor. Yeah. But, uh, you know, within five minutes of Charlie getting the, the golden ticket, he gets the healing power of the gold. Just, just, just dancing a jig. He's just up running. singing and dancing, and we got a golden ticket. Fuck you, Grandpa Joe. <laughs> the floor wasn't cold then, was it? You let that whole family down. I'll never forgive you. <laughs> ran over. <laughs> ran over. Hot take there, Todd. Hot take. Yeah, Grandpa Joe is a pretty, pretty miserable fuck, if you ask me. Uh, all the rest of them, they stay bedridden. But, man, Grandpa Joe, he really seized that opportunity. Yeah, he, he was. He ran with it, literally. Yeah, I really literally ran with it. After being bedridden. Hi, yeah. Go figure. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, Charlie does end up being one of the, the five lucky contestants that finds the, uh, the golden ticket. So they get the chance to go meet, uh, Willy Wonka. So they, they set up the date and the time that they're supposed to be there, not to be late. They go there and we're first introduced finally to our, I guess our main protagonist in a way besides Charlie, which is, uh, Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka. So what did, what did you think about him the first time that you saw him? Kind of your first impressions of him, Todd? I liked how he kind of came out like he was kind of all old and decrepit. And at one point, he's kind of taking a step and he's left the cane behind him. And he yeah. just does that little ole pirouette. Exactly. He stands up. I got a little <laughs> bit of, you know, behind the scenes stuff on that as well. But yeah, definitely uh, meeting him and seeing him for the first time, it's. It's, it always kind of keeps you guessing, which I think is a, a foundation of that character, is you never really know what he's all about. What is this guy's yeah, deal? Yeah, he's kind of ambiguous. Yeah, he's very ambiguous. Got a little very, bit of a mean streak, Yeah, maybe. enigmatic. And yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, he's uh, you don't know what you're going to get. He's got a lot of layers, like yeah. candy and onions. He's got a lot of layers. Tom. You kind of get the feeling that, you know, he kind of knew going in what the bad apples in that bunch of kids were. Yeah. And when they start getting into the little shenanigans, he's kind of over like, stop, please don't. Don't do that. That's that's Police? that's one of the uh, that's one of the, the the best little running gags and funniest <laughs> things for that character. It's his little like someone's about to do something that could potentially get him killed, and he's like, "No, stop! Don't. Please don't do that. Please don't touch. Help. Yeah, <laughs> Help. that's I do do very much love that part of the character. That is that that is one of the, the things that gave me the most joy in watching this. Is he's that little interaction. And I think yeah, you're right. He's like he's kind of almost in a way. Do you think he's like set up the tour to like kind of bring out the worst in the kids to kind of test them or to try to like maybe even punish them in a way to see if they can go against their worser nature and maybe, choose their better yeah. nature. I think he's, he set up the tour to kind of take them to each one of their almost vices in a way, sort of. And see if, and if they can, you know, 
fight it off, you know, right. resist like, the temptation. Take Augustus to a room full of candy. Can right. he keep it out of his mouth? No. You know, you know, all this stuff like Violet, here's a here's a here's like a piece of chewing gum, like for Violet, can she resist putting it in her mouth? No. Right. You know, so I think I think it is a little bit that he's kind of like set him up to kind of as a test as we kind of kind of see what the whole reason for him bringing these people into the, the chocolate factory in the first place he is. So, but I think there's a little bit more of the, I think uh, part of the Wonka character and the whole tour of the factory is there's, there's more than meets the eye right. uh, to old Willy Wonka. Um, let's talk about the, 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 char- the, the chocolate factory itself. The, so the sets and the production design for this being a $3 million movie, um, obviously $3 million made four million didn't really do that well right when it was released but I mean as far as production like a design and quality the sets are really really good they're really imaginative really fun really vibrant really fits the tone of the the, the film the only thing that I think falls short uh, and I, uh, again I have a little bit more about it too uh, the chocolate river does look like a river of feces <laughs> I would have, if I was Augusta Squeep, I would have not immediately tried to stick my face in that. Right? Uh, is this kind of some kind of industrial runoff here, Willie? What, what is this? <laughs> is this some kind of waste that you got running through your factory here? Uh, and there's also at one point, there's a at one point uh, Wonka kind of bats a gummy bear into somebody's hands, and you can hear it's obviously a big chunk of plastic. Just from it like kind of makes it squeak. Yeah, noise. it's just like <laughs> just from the the thunk it kind of makes in their hands. But like overall, everything looks. Uh, Looks really good in the film. Everything's pretty solid. Yeah, I really enjoyed that that initial set. You know, outside of maybe the sus chocolate river, right. but that you know that first big set piece we see inside the factory where, you know, had all of that you know look like cream stuff edible out of the mushrooms mm-hmm. and. Willie kind of takes that little bit of tea and he actually eats the cup. Yeah, I think that's a little note I had too. Apparently that was made of wax and he had to chew the wax and then till the take was over and then spit it out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he kind of takes them through different things. We see, you know, kind of the, the fun craziness of like what goes on in the Wonka factory. And again, how much of it is, how much of it is real and how much of it was just made up for just this, the purpose of this visit is something that's kind of fun to think about. You have things like lickable wallpaper, um, the fizzy lifting drinks. Fizzy lifting drinks. That's a really neat little scene. I thought, mm-hmm. um, I enjoy they go in and uh, he tells them, you know, about the fizzy lifting drinks. If you drink it, it kind of like lets you kind of fly in a way. They're not supposed to drink it. Charlie and Grandpa do- Joe do decide to like break the rules a little bit and drink the lifting, uh, the fizzy lifting drink, which kind of lifts them up towards a little dramatic little. Uh, fan. Going towards that fan. Yeah, a little dramatic little standoff with a fan. But I liked it because I was thinking about, too, like, obviously it's like, you know, some wire work. It's the 70s. Uh, it's a you know, fairly low-budget film. I like that they added all the bubbles in the room. That kind of helps kind of cover some of that maybe not-so-great wire work and seeing the wires and stuff because you can't – you're focusing on the bubbles and what's going on. Right. It's a pretty well-executed scene except for that very bad composite shot. You know what I'm talking about, where they're obviously filmed on another shot and, like, put in and inserted into that film. Right. Does not look good. Very, very bad composite shot there. But overall, I think it's a a really good kind of little solid scene that kind of comes back a little bit later, which we'll talk about, uh, about stealing the fizzy lifting drinks. I had a note I wanted to ask you about what you thought about the hallucination-induced boat ride. Yeah, (laughs) boat ride was my next thing. So, yeah, there's a lot going on with that boat ride. Um... The background imagery really surprised me. It's like things getting eaten. And, and I, thought, I thought I saw a chicken get its head chopped off at one point. It was like a large worm or a snake on somebody's face or something. Yeah, um, and then you kind of have Willy Wonka kind of almost. Going off the rails. Yeah, I got the thing here. So on the on part of the him kind of singing his song in that, uh, he says, and it kind of goes from him saying it to being a little bit sing-songy to just being like a raving Sh- lunatic. Shouting it. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing. Are the fires of hell a-glowing? And the grizzly is the grizzly reaper mowing. Yes, the danger must be growing, for the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing. And he's just like losing it more and more. <laughs> is and then you're like left to wonder: Is this an act, or is this this the result of this guy being locked away in a chocolate factory for <laughs> most of his adult life? Is he actually insane or not? And right. You, you kind of see a little bit behind there, and I don't know if this is an act or not. I don't know if Willie's all there anymore. Yeah, 
he's got a little bit of a sinister <laughs> undertone, which I don't mind. But then I was also thinking, this is a 1970s children's movie. True. And this is a, it goes a little strange here. Right. But I like the boat ride in general. They're all just like, what the fuck are you doing? It's like a bad acid trip. Where, where the hell are we going, <laughs> Willie? Are we even moving anymore? Like kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, with that, so uh, what did you think about the the musical numbers in the film here? So we've got the Candy Man. Uh, give me a little sex pest vibes, not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> Cheer Up Charlie, which is Charlie Mom's song. Uh, Golden Ticket. Pure Imagination. Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo. Uh, Wondrous Boat Ride. And I Want It Now. I don't, I don't think, I think that's all of them. I don't think I missed anything. What's, what's the best song in the film to you? Uh, for me, in my opinion, it's Pure Imagination. I absolutely love that song. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hands down. It's Pure Imagination. So things I knew about this movie before ever watching it, it was obviously the premise pretty much. I always heard people say Charlie's the Charlie's mom song sucks. I didn't think it sucked. It's definitely probably one of the weaker songs it of the d- film. It doesn't suck, though. Yeah, um, that was one of those things that just like uh, that kind of stuck out to me as like uh, – you know, that was one of the things I heard about. You want you'll want to fast forward through Charlie's mom's song. And it wasn't as terrible as I no. as anybody said. But uh what what's is it the worst song? Is there a worst song to you in the film? I think it's that one by Veruca that I want, I want it now. now. Yeah, I, just because she she's just annoying. A, a annoying character yeah, anyway. <laughs> exactly. Overall, I wasn't really in love with too much of the the music here except for Probably pure imagination. I mean, they're all like again, they're so ingrained in pop culture, but like none of it like I don't know, like, not really blew me away. But it was just like, you know, I, I think they're fine. I don't think they're like most of them are not going to be like I'm not going to be singing and they're not going to be stuck in my head except right. for maybe pure imagination just because it's been around so much and. um probably Golden Ticket, and yeah. a little bit of Oompa Loompa. But, like, some of the other songs, like the Cheer Up Charlie, Candy Man, they're fine. They're just not, like, they're not standouts, I would say. Is this technically considered a musical? I mean, I, I've wondered that. I don't know what the, uh, what, I don't know what the actual parameters are. Yeah, parameters are being considered a musical. If someone breaks into song into your into your movie more than once or once, I guess is it that, would have to be, right? I think if it does more than once, I think that's considered a musical. Okay. Like, I think you could get away with it for, like, parody or satire or just weirdness of filmmaking just to have one. But I think if you do it multiple times, I think you're considered a, a musical at that point. Right. Um, we talked about Wonka's, no, stop, don't, great little character thing. <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, the main messages of this film, like I said, with the way it's set up, is it's kind of, you know, be kind, stay humble, being honest, you know, that goes a long way. Right. Uh, you know, there's consequences to being nasty and greedy and grubby little children, and uh, sometimes you get sucked into giant pipes or <laughs> take you on, you know, freaky boat rides or you get sw- swole up like a big violet uh blueberry, like all kinds of little stuff. But I mean, it's mostly about being a good person and not being greedy or nasty or anything like that is is pretty much the main message that I kind of take away from it. What about you? Yeah. And uh, that's another point that I had that I wanted to ask you. Uh, I've never read the book, but no. uh, do we ever really find out what happens to those four other kids and their parents? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I've, I've always heard, you know, there's always been those like film theories and stuff mm-hmm. like, is Willy Wonka a secret murderer? Like, you know, kind of things like you can kind of like put that into this. It's like, is he some kind of secret serial killer? Does he lure children into a chocolate factory to murder them? That kind of thing. Like you really, I mean, you don't know. I don't think it's as sinister as that. I just think it's a, it's a, you know, a very weird kind of enigmatic kind of shutty and just having some fun. Having some fun at their experience. And and weeding out the bad eggs from the good egg about potentially people that could run his chocolate factory, but you could almost make your own kind of fan fiction to be like, yeah, they're dead. They're dead. They're gone. I, and I hope Veruca is. <laughs> if there if there is any credence to that uh, <laughs> that theory, I hope it happened to her and her father. And she's like, oh, well, I want a goose, Daddy. I want my own goose, and I want it now. Fuck you, goose. You get nothing. <laughs> you get your father out of here. Throw you out on your asses. <laughs> oh, my God. I cannot stand her. God, she was so spoiled. She is. She nailed that character. Yeah. And so we get one kind of, uh, you know, after everybody's kind of weeded out and it's just down to to, to Charlie and uh, Grandpa Joe, we learn that uh, they're, they're, Wonka has uh, some hard feelings about them, we think. So can you break down that scene a little bit for <laughs> us, Todd? 
So they kind of come right there to the end, and it's just, you know, uh, Grandpa Joe and Charlie and Willie, and he's like, well, you know, hope you enjoyed the tour. Does the door, you know, howdy I, I got a lot of shit to do. I got a lot of stuff. He goes off into his office, and Uncle Joe, I mean, Grandpa Joe, he's yeah. like, what? What? That's it? So they, they go on in there, and, you know, they're like, uh, Mr. Wonka, what about the <laughs> Lifetime Supply of Chocolate? And yeah. He's like, well, what about the fizzy, lifty drinks you drunk? <laughs> what about the shit you stole from yeah, me? Yeah, what about the stuff you stole from me? The stuff you drunk, you weren't supposed to touch. Yeah. You get nothing. You, get you lose. lose. Good day, sir. Classic me making its way all over right exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. And, like, you think, you're like, oh, shit. And so Grandpa Joe's like, well, fuck this guy. Yeah. <laughs> we got this everlasting gobstopper in our, in our pocket. We're going to go sell it to old Slugsworth, make millions, and put this son of a bitch out of business. <laughs> but Charlie. But Charlie does the right thing. He takes it over there and puts it back on Willie's table right there beside him. He's like, Mr. Wonka. Paraphrasing, I don't remember yeah. the exact line. This belongs to you. I'm yeah. not going to. And you know, he's getting ready to leave, and Willie's like, Charlie. And he turns around and he's like, congratulations, my boy. <laughs> you, you get everything. You get everything. You get everything. <laughs> you put the gobstopper back. You're a good egg. When I die, this chocolate factory will indeed be yours. He takes him up into the Wonka Vader. Wonka Vader. Wonka Vader. And the final line of the film, he says to, uh, they're kind of looking out over all the, they're looking for Charlie's house and looking out over the, the little town. And Wonka says, don't forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he wanted. And Charlie says, what happened? And Wonka says, he lived happily ever after. Man, I almost tear you up right there, boy. <laughs> Until the Wonka Vader crashes into a mountain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's got to come down sometime. Uh, hey, film theory, you technically don't know. You don't see what happens. It could have crashed it and burned. It ain't attached to nothing. No. I don't know where it's I don't landing. know how it's getting down. But, yeah, I mean, overall, like I said, I um, I got – it's mixed. I don't – this didn't – I didn't watch it and immediately, like, understand why it's a classic. Like it wasn't, it didn't just stick out to me like, right. oh my God, like if I, like the first time I ever sat down and watched The Godfather or, you know, and this is not, this is not the same type of film and it's, you know, obviously it's a mix of, it's hard to really even call it a children's movie, but it is. Kind of dark. <laughs> it is. It does have some of those, but I mean, I kind of, I kind of wonder about where it fits. It just kind of seems like it, it existed and it kind of established, um, itself among you know people kind of your age that kind of you know grew, kind of up, grew it. up with it and it, and then it's obviously ingrained into, into society and pop culture and it, it'll it's endured this long and will continue to endure um you know seeing it one time i don't think it would be something that i would continuously seek to go back to myself and be like oh i you know, I'm gonna sit down and watch me some Willy Wonka again. Right, like I right. don't, I don't feel that way about it. I can definitely see the the tremendous kind of behind the scenes work and the, and the appreciate the, th the things that went into the production and the making of the film. But um, I wouldn't call it a classic for me. But I understand its appeal to younger people and the people that saw it at the time. And it was a different time and a different place. And I do appreciate it for some some of the weirdness that it does have. That it's not a straight out and out family friendly children's movie it's 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 got a little bit of an edge to it right obviously gene wilder is a fantastic legendary actor yeah and i mean he he brought something to that role that i don't think anyone else could have exactly so i appreciate it for what it is it is it is it an instant classic in my mind not as much but not going to detract or, or bad mouth it at all or take away from anyone that does you know, I think there's people out there that could probably say that it is a perfect masterpiece type of movie and one of their favorites, and I don't begrudge anybody from doing that. It's not – it wouldn't be in my top 10 or top 15, like, you know, best movies I've ever seen, but yeah. it's still enjoyable nonetheless. I still am glad I did watch it and finally okay. sit down and understand what it's about and see it for myself. Uh, so what about you, Todd? You got any final thoughts here before we move on to our review score? Uh, I had a little tidbit about the young guy that played Charlie. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, the young actor's name was uh, Peter. I hope I'm getting this right. Ostrom. Mm -hmm. uh, this was his uh, first acting role, and oddly enough, it was his only acting role. Yes. Yes. Uh, I I heard that he uh, actually went on to be a veterinarian. Right. That's what I have right here. Yeah. He went on to be a vet. Uh, I got some other stuff too. While we're talking about, let's let's uh, do a little Wonka goofs here. So uh, the bucket house, a scene from the Wonka Vader, doesn't match earlier scene to the same house. Okay. Uh, the chocolate bar given, I noticed this when I was watching, the chocolate bar given to Charlie for his birthday 
that they hope might contain a ticket is not the same type as the ones that contain the ticket. Did you notice that? Yeah, it wasn't a it's like bar. A, yeah, it's like a little baggie, almost like mm-hmm. a chewing tobacco kind of type bag, yeah. like a big league chew mm-hmm. bag. Uh, and I was like, well, that's weird. I was like, why? That's not the Wonka bar. That one that's even not... had one in it. Exactly. Uh, at the beginning of the boat ride, when Wonka asked, uh, well, says, you're going to love uh, this, just excuse me, you're going to love this, just love it. He sits down with one leg crossed over the other, but during the boat ride, he is sitting with both legs apart. And then while Charlie and Grandpa Joe are floating in the air, Grandpa Joe says, let's just fly south for the winter. The fan above them is shown spinning in a clockwise direction, and once they get close to the fan, it's now spinning counterclockwise. Just a couple little goofs there, not much. Continuity. Some Wonka bits here for you, Todd. Um... In the DVD commentary, Peter Ostrom that plays Charlie that you mentioned, uh, he mentioned that toward the end of the shoot, uh, with him being the only kid left, he and Gene Wilder often ate lunch together. Uh, Fittingly, they finished their lunches by sharing a chocolate bar for dessert as they walked back to set. How about that? Uh, Ernst Ziegler, who played Grandpa George, he's the other grandpa. Okay, the other Grandpa the other, George. Okay. Yeah, the other gr- bedridden grandpa. <laughs> he was nearly uh, blind from poison gas in World War One, so he was instructed to look for a red light to guide him when his character was meant to be looking in a specific direction. Somebody just had like a laser pointer like a cat. Grandpa George over here. <laughs> well, you know, he had a reason to be he bedridden. Did, he did. He had an excuse. Uh, after reading the script, Gene Wilder said he would take the role of Willy Wonka under one condition, that he would be allowed to limp and then suddenly somersault in the scene when he first meets the children. When de- uh, director Mel Stewart asked why, Wilder replied that having Wonka do this meant that from that time on, no one will know if I'm lying or telling the truth. Stewart asked, if I say no, you won't do the picture. Wilder said, I'm afraid that's the truth. Oh. So he kind of understood what he wanted the character to be from the right. get-go. You never really know about Willy Wonka. Right. You're just not sure. The Chocolate River was made from 150,000 gallons of water, real chocolate, and cream. The filmmakers had to change the formula for the Chocolate River because originally the concoction they were using turned blood red. Because of the cream, the mixture began to spoil, and by the end of filming, it smelled terrible. Uh, The child who played Augustus Gloop later described it as dirty, stinky water. Aww. When Gene Wilder died in 2016, Peter Ostrom changed his social media profile to former child actor, veterinarian, inherited a chocolate factory on August 29th, 2016. Ah, that's nice. This is the only film role of Peter Ostrom, as you mentioned. He would go on to uh, uh, be a veterinarian after buying a horse. And Denise Nickerson, who played Violet Beauregard, didn't want to do the nose-picking bit because she had a a crush on Peter Ostrom, who played Charlie Bucket, and didn't want to embarrass herself. Ah, young love. The Oompa Loompas were known for hard partying offset, even traveling in a limo together to bars. How about that? Sounds like a good time. When Willy uh, Wonka drinks from a flower-shaped cup and eats it, I talked about before, it was made of wax. He had to chew the wax pieces to the end of the take, at which point he spat them out. And finally here, Gene Wilder's acting during the boat ride sequence is so convincing that it frightened some of the other actors and actresses, including Denise Nickerson, who played Violet. They thought that Wilder was going mad from being in the tunnel. (laughs) Really committed to it. Very method, Todd. Acting, folks. Exactly. So, Todd, let's go into final thoughts and review. We rank films on a 1 to 10 scale, starting from the ranks. Uh, One is Torture. Two, awful. Three, bad. Four, subpar. Five, mediocre. Six, decent. Seven, good. Eight, great. Nine, amazing. Ten, masterpiece. Todd, give us any final thoughts you have and your review score for Willy Wonka and The Chocolate Factory. You know, uh, this is one of those kind of timeless children's movies that you kind of grow up and then you grow old with. Uh, You kind of pass it on to your kids. Hopefully they'll pass it on to their grandkids. Uh, to me, Gene Wilder will always be the embodiment of Willy Wonka. I mean, it doesn't get any better than Gene Wilder, in my opinion. Uh, at heart, it's a wonderful tale of a good kid with a good heart that finally gets a break and winds up with the gift of a lifetime. Yep. I give Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory eight big old everlasting gobstoppers, <laughs> which on our scale is great. Gotcha. So, yeah, I, I agree. I can't can't take anything away from that. Um I have, I'm yet to see Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We'll, I haven't either. We'll be covering that um, for Popcorn Mumbles coming up uh, very soon as well. We're also going to be checking out the new Timothy Chalamet Wonka. 
Uh, I don't really, again, I think that's an example of I don't really need to know much more about Willy Wonka. Right. Uh, taking some of the mystery out of it might lessen it for me, but True. we'll see. But for you, I don't think, uh, for you and me, I don't think anyone is going to take Gene Wilder's place as Willy Wonka. He, he cemented that character and I think understood it and turned it into to what it is, and you can never take that away. Uh, for me, um, again, it, it's not the... The, the classic masterpiece, you know, that I think other people may see it as. But to take nothing away from it, I feel, I still think it's a very good movie. So I give Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factor se- uh, Factory 7 fizzy lifting drinks oh. time out of 10, which ranks it as good. So, Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. We are Tao Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tao Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at towelcapespod at gmail.com. Also, if your show obliged, leaving us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Popcorn Mumbles will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys. And sterilize so you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir.